For years, the seven and a half ton truck market has been in decline, but people still love seven and a half tonners like these, and for good reason. The UK road network is set up to house them. But there are alternatives. 12 tonners going up in weight or going down in weight to vans on a chassis like this at 7.2 tonnes. We're going to take them out on the road and talk about the benefits of going up in weight and down in weight. So this is the Aveco Daily 7.2 tonne van. And the important thing about this is that the axle's in front of me and the ride therefore is a lot smoother than it would be in a 7.5 tonne truck. So because it's based on a van chassis, it, it drives just like a van would really. It's, it's nicer and it's more comfortable to be in. Um, but the downside is that it doesn't turn in the same way that a, a cab over truck would. Um, so in a city, that's gonna hamper your maneuverability a little bit. Um, it is the same footprint as a, as a seven and a half ton truck, um, but it just doesn't look quite as big. Uh, so the payloads are similar, the size is similar, but it's just, it's not as imposing. If you were to be working in a city every day doing a multi-drop job, you really want the van over the truck as well. The access is so much better in this. There's like one step and then you're straight in the seat. You don't have to hoik yourself in, you know, the, the, the foot height is, is minimal compared to the other one. I definitely prefer to do this in a city. And of course, the other thing about it being a van is that it's built like a van. It's the, the interior is so much more comfortable. There's controls on the steering wheel. There's a nice infotainment system. It's, it's just nice compared to the entry level um, sort of stuff you get in a seven and a half ton uh, cab over truck. This is the DAF LF, the most popular seven and a half tonner on the road except for this isn't a seven and a half tonner, this is a 12 ton truck. And with that, you get four and a half extra tons of payload over a seven and a half tonner. So in a seven and a half ton, you'll get 2.5 tons of payload, which is pretty much the same as in the Iveco van. And this, you get, what's that? Four and a half, seven tons. That's an awful lot of payload. So of course, it's gonna be a bit more expensive than a seven and a half tonner, but I mean, it is a bigger vehicle, so you'd expect to pay a little bit more, but to balance that out, you're only paying 60 pounds more in road tax. So they increase productivity and those marginal costs really work in your favor. Compared to the daily, this is a much bigger truck to drive. Although it isn't, it just feels like it. I mean, look at these wing mirrors, they're huge. They'd, you'd find those in a DAF CF. And while that might be good for uh, a motorway trunking operation, you know, just trundling up and down, you have all the comfort you'd expect from a, a long haul truck, in a city, I wouldn't want to do it. The van is much better, more agile, nicer to drive, and just more comfortable. In Europe, they abandoned seven and a half tonners years ago, and with just reason. The only reason why we hang on to them in the UK is because of our seven and a half ton grandfather rights allowance for you know older drivers to, to just jump in on a car license, and because of the road network, which is very much geared up with seven and a half ton weight restrictions. If we get over those hurdles, there's no reason why you wouldn't buy a 10 ton or a 12 ton vehicle because of that productivity. This is the way we should be going. So there are obvious benefits to having both the van and the truck. If you need payload, the 12 tonner is your answer. It's got more capacity than a seven and a half tonner does. But for me, I think downsizing really is the way forward. The van is nice to drive and it's not quite so terrifying for the public. The public like vans. After all, you can get an ice cream van and you can't get an ice cream truck.